In this week's episode of Studio Inter, we'll be discussing the heavy loss against Napoli. We'll be previewing the deciding match against Empoli. This week's Moji, Moratti, Frog and Inter Legends and much, much more. Everything here on Studio Inter, only on sempreinter.com. Ecco Perisic, uno contro uno, gioco di gambe, guadagna il fondo, il cross, i cardi, e gol, 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 Maurito il Mamba! Sono i blocchi nell'area di rigore, arriva la palla, la prende Messino! Benvenuti, bentornati to another edition of Studio Inter. I'm your host, Nima Tarallo Yeruzzari, uh, wishing you welcome to uh, a new week, although I wish it was under much nicer circumstances. Um, the, the summer has finally come to Sweden. It's really hot, it's really humid, the birds are chirping, but all is not well in the land of Inter. In fact, if, if, this was, if, if the weather were to reflect how, how things are in Interland, I think the forecasts would be crap storm with lots of it on with 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 a lot of it still to come uh, because the Inter simply decided not to turn up against Napoli yesterday as we all saw and got completely hammered outplayed outfought outclassed but we'll get to that uh, but uh, and we're going to get to that with our uh, four panelists uh, I'd like to starting with the uh, preview writer for sampleinter.com uh, the man who usually is Mr. Positivity, but Inter has managed to drain this man of all his happiness, which is quite a feat. Uh, welcome, Mr. Mohamed Nassar. Hello. <laughs> I mean, everyone who listens to this show knows that, you know, you're the guy who always has, you know, there's a, every cloud has, you know, has a silver lining. But they, 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 they've really, they've broken you as well, haven't they? They've literally broken you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, it was, uh, there, there's there's nothing nothing positive to take away from this week. Absolutely nothing at all. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I'll try not to make the uh, make the uh, the audience uh, slit the wrists as we go along. I'll try and find something to be positive about. <laughs> it's not looking uh, it's not looking uh, like the, the for- prospects like it. The forecast is continued crap storm, as I said. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right. And we are also joined by our good friend all the way from Canada. He's our, 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 our he's the guy we turn to when, when um, we have questions regarding refereeing matters, because he is a referee, but he's also on TSN Sports. Welcome back, Mr. Michael Gallo. Nima, thank you for having me. And, uh, you know, Sweden might have gotten their summer yet, but it snowed here in Toronto last week, so... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it is. Uh, I'm hoping. I'm hoping that the sunshine eventually comes to Canada, which I don't think it will all summer yeah. long. As long as Inter <laughs> makes Champions League, maybe we'll get some. Well, yeah, exactly. As at least as as as, this, as long as the summer reaches Interland, uh, but we'll we'll get to that if with the prospects of that. Um, and we're also joined. And we're also joined by our good friend, uh, the Inter Legends writer on Semprinter.com, and soon on Semprinter TV on YouTube, Mr. Critty Smith. If you're a betting man or woman <laughs> and you bet even one euro that enters finishing top four next week, you do not value your income, my friend. <laughs> I, 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 I feel bad for our next guest because we're, you, you know, we're usually not this miserable. But when, when, when Mo is broken, then, you know, that just says how much Inter have screwed with people's minds. Um Welcome. Uh, he is part of the Gianluca Di Marzio uh, in, uh, dot com's English excellent English crew. Uh, he's he's also been a couple of times on uh, David Amoyal's Calcio Land podcast, uh, w- making his studio inter debut. Welcome to Studio Inter, Mr. Gabriele Romano. Hi everyone. Thanks Nima for having me. Uh, although uh, I <laughs> I'm wondering <laughs> where am I? <laughs> is it the right place? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, no, you. That's it's it's it's. it's, it's I'm really sorry, but but you of, <laughs> no, of, no of, all, of all the times you decided to come on this this week really is misery week and yeah and and, and, and I mean you I know get it, I get it I under, I know you get it because you you know tell you live in Italy you write for Di Marzio yeah. uh, you're an you're an Inter fan or you know let us little know about yourself yeah so I'm an Inter fan so I totally get it. Uh, <laughs> I'm kind of pessimistic to this week, so I totally get it. I I know uh, we're all on the same boat. 
You've been you've been in Italy during you know everyone who's been in Italy and seen front have had front row seats to the freak show that has been Inter. Yeah. Inter is a circus. I mean, basically since Christmas Day when that nine Raja Nangolan WhatsApp audio leaked until today, it's been chaos. It's been complete chaos, hasn't it? Yeah, utter chaos, really. It's been downhill since the Nangolan uh, audio to Icardi and then uh, who knows what's next. <laughs> With Inter you can never know what's next. <laughs> well, I mean, I think Wanda gave us a, gave us a nice little, <laughs> ah, <yeah. laughs> little preview of what's next by, putting, <laughs> by, by having some interesting thoughts about the anatomy of uh, uh, the sister of Daniela Adani. <laughs> Adani. But, <laughs> we'll, we'll get into that. Um, right, uh, but let's let's talk about the Napoli game. I mean, this was a game where everything, you know, Inter had a fantastic week. Uh, Milan Skriniar renewed, and the way he renewed, um, you know, uh, he 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 revealed that he'd sacked his his agent because his agent wanted to move him from Inter, and he didn't want yeah. to move from Inter. You know, all Inter fans were were on a on a high, you know, and and then and then you had. Uh, the, the day after, you had the news that Inter are no longer in the finance, in, are no longer bound by the settlement agreement that have been hindering the club. So it's, it was an absolutely brilliant, positive week. It was really a great week until uh, the day after when, when, uh, when personally I was a little bit worried because I, I read that um, Luciano Spalletti, the the man who's known for his diplomatic way of handling problems and never making a situation worse um, <laughs> by sending by sending Jean Mario home from training be like a like a naughty schoolboy for not having the right attitude in training um, and then you know that's when I started feeling okay this is not going to end well because this is not a team that reacts well to these kinds of things and then we saw what happened um, on on Sunday night yesterday night it was Monday when we were recording Inter were completely destroyed by Napoli. Napoli mopped the floor with Inter for 90 minutes. Um, and I'm really, I don't know what to make of all that. Uh, I'll, I'll start with you, Michael. I mean, where are you on, on this whole thing? Where are you on, the, like, how did you experience the game? Well, it was, I was going back and forth between the uh, the Juve Atalanta game. And uh, I just, I don't know, you, you, you see it, they, they look lost. On the field, I don't, I didn't see a game plan, and it kind of, the way I looked at it, there's so many with all the rumors with, with Spalletti leaving and Conte coming, in, I just you see so much, and for a team that Spalletti could not be at next season, how, where's the motivation? And that's where I kind of look into. I didn't seem like the team was motivated, whether it be the coach, the players, whatever it may be. I didn't see motivation, and Napoli, they destroyed us. They they literally destroyed us from. Every aspect of the game, we had hardly any scoring chances. I mean, the best one probably, I mean, other than the penalty, but the best scoring chance we had is when Koulibaly made that nice play at, yeah. at, the, at the goal line. But I just, we were never in that game, ever, the entire 90 minutes. I agree. And I, agree. I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't think the team was motivated. And like you said, with all the good things that happened in the week, where we uh, it come, where it was a letdown coming it seemed like that's exactly what happened, and I just didn't seem didn't feel like the players were motivated. The coach was motivated, and uh, there was kind of that buffer. You know what I mean? It wasn't like they had to win that game because they knew that if they win the, the following week, they would still probably they would still get through. But with that buffer, I think it maybe made them play a little bit. Uh, no, no emergency was there yet. You know what I mean? Excellent. Absolutely. Um, I, I have a, you know, I, I agree with with what you said that they they didn't look motivated. But for me, more than a motivational issue, this was a this was a tactical issue. And I'm keen to hear what everyone thinks on this because the way I look at it is this: that all season now, or actually for two seasons now, Spalletti has said that Inter lacked the quality to be able to play their way out of a high press against quality teams that not only press high re really well, but they do so with quality. I've heard him say this time and time and time again. Yet, what does he do? He shows up against Carlo Ancelotti, who's, I mean, the one of the best in the world, against a Napoli who's, who's, who, who is on paper better than Inter, and plays the exact same game. And that is why, that, that is how... Napoli completely destroy Inter tactically and pressure Inter to the point of break, you know, breaking point, 
and they just continue time and time and time again. And Spalletti standing there on the sidelines with his arms, you know, out, wondering what the hell is going on. Um, how much would you, you know, first of all, I'd like to ask you, Mo, do you agree with that analysis? And, and if, if so, how much do you blame the players and how much do you blame Spalletti? Where are you on this? Look, I agree with you that uh, that this uh, playing out from the back was, was utter nonsense yesterday. It it clearly wasn't working in the first 20 minutes, and I don't know why they persisted, why Spalletti persisted on on on, on moving, um, playing with that. And we know that Gagliardini, in particular, is probably the worst midfielder to have when you're when when being pressured, especially when he receives uh, the ball with his back to the opponent's goal. He, he, he gets flustered so easily. This guy can be a world-class midfielder when he's playing with the ball at his feet and, and, and moving into spaces, but with his back to the opponent's goal, he's just awful. He, he, he loses possession so often. His, his passes are, 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 are... So he, he, he definitely wasn't the right player, even though we've all questioned why Gagliardini was, was absent for such a long time after having had a bunch of man-of-the-match performances earlier this year. He... For no re- no reason, no clear reason, gets benched for a five five match stretch, and then gets thrown in, you know, in the worst possible match for him. So so I think it's a combination of everything. I think you're you're quite right in saying that the tactics for the match weren't right. I think the midfield selection, as we've we've almost consistently been frustrated with Spalletti, he just doesn't like. Get we, it. Don't, we don't know who our <laughs> midfield trio is. Like no. we, we just don't know who the who the best midfield trio is, and no. and, and sometimes it's been João Mario, Gagliardini, and uh, Vecino, some, uh, and uh, Brozovic. Sometimes it's been Brozovic and uh, Nainggolan, and some, it's just it's a mess in midfield, and and that's where that's where we lost the match. That's where we weren't a, we weren't able to impose what what little ideas that we had because we we were completely overrun in the midfield. Add to that, I think. A question of attitude and and willpower and and like Michael just said, I feel like these guys know like like they know we know these guys and and, and we know how, how how they react and they know that they have a get out of jail free card against Empoli. We know that and 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 it's in the, the back of their mind they've already lost, you know they 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 mentally had already mm-hmm. checked out before they stepped onto the pitch. You, you can definitely tell that they weren't there to win. They were there just to, to fill the 90 minutes and go back and fight against Tempoli. And that's just not, you know, if, if you have a team enough. that wants it's to... It's not good enough. It's not good it's enough. Not it's good not good enough, enough for no, Inter. It's, it's not, not good enough, enough for, for the project. It's not good enough for the great news that we've had all week. It's not good enough by any metric. It's not acceptable. Yeah. It's not acceptable for Inter to go to Napoli knowing that you can easily, you know, relieve all the fans from the ridiculous pressure that we're going to be suffering next Sunday. And, 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 and... and, and you know, and just have that abysmal performance. And, you know, so I think it's on everyone. It's on Spalletti. And I think maybe if two out of these three factors, you know, like it's a three out of three, yeah, you know, you know like yeah. screw up. And but if, if, up, if yeah. one of them had worked, if one, you know, if, if the midfield selection had got, was right, maybe we would have had a fighting chance. If the players were mentally prepared, then maybe we, maybe that bust up on the field with uh, Ra- uh, on the training pitch with Joao Mario hadn't happened midweek, maybe we would have ha- had a fighting chance. Something, but there, the, the, like you could tell 15, uh, 15, 16 minutes in, this, this was never like, this was, Inter were never going, going to get something out of this match. Critty, where are you yeah, on this Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. No, I know you're okay, there. So, <laughs> I know you're there. I'm just so wondering first off, where you... <laughs> you, you... You know exactly where I stand on this. You and I communicated during this match yesterday. I'm effing pissed. Pissed <laughs> off. Um, let me start by saying, first of all, with Inter, this Inter. Maybe you're talking about 2010 Inter. This 2019 Inter, there is no such thing as a get-out-of-jail-free card. That is absurd. No, no offense, Mo. I know what you meant, but I'm just saying that the team should not think that way. Yeah. There is no – and Empoli is going to come with everything they've got because if they win, they're safe. They're exactly. going to, I mean, fully exactly. expect them to beat us. Fully expect them to beat us this week, A. B, they're, they, I don't want to talk tactics. This, I, I'm done talking tactics. I want to talk heart, desire, disinterest, irrelevancy, just not partaking in anything – for 90 minutes this team yesterday this is the most infuriated i can remember myself being as an inter fan in a long long time i've been patient 
I've been patient during the rebuild. I understand 2010, 2011, you got to replace some old bodies. I get it. It's going to take, you know, two or three years. You know, Juventus finished back-to-back seventh place. They did so. And then, you know, it's been a decade now. It's been a decade now. I I am utterly fed up with this group of players, this administration, not Morata. He's obviously just got there, but Spalletti, the the whole lot of them. I I told you yesterday, and you agreed with me, I would take a 43-year-old Zanetti over a 26-year-old Icardi any day of the week, twice on Sunday and four times on Wednesday. This is ridiculous. This, 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 you know, Marito got his goal, by the way, in case anyone was wondering. Uh, that was awesome. <laughs> that gave, you know, so maybe he's closer to getting that, that Capo Canonieri he wants so bad, right? He's seventh all time scorer in Serie A, which is, that just pisses me off even more. Um, th- th- this, 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 this mentality that, that, oh, we can save ourselves next week. There's no guarantee next week. It's a loser's you can save mentality. Yourself this week. It's a loser's Idiot. mentality in my it's a loser's mentality in my opinion that you know what the, what world class team goes out thinking like that you know you don't go into a big big game against a, against the, you know the, the you know against an opponent that you say that you want to be you want to be ahead next season with with that mentality and 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 that to me you know that's the coach's job to get them right. out of this out of this this mentality and he failed miserably because right. instead and of getting them to think of win he decided to pick a fight with another player <laughs> I, I, right and, and here's his I, I don't get final that things on a couple final things in the match i i don't have a problem let me say this first and foremost i don't have a problem with inter losing to this napoli 3-2 in a dog fight at the sao paulo i get that okay mm-hmm. I, I i'm totally accepting of that i have a problem a big problem with Inter going to the Sao Paulo and not giving a you-know-what for 90 minutes. They did not care. I saw a lifeless, careless, unbelievably disinterested group of players out there yesterday, and they, they were like that for the entire duration of the match. I mean, Carlo Ancelotti uh, probably didn't even... He probably called the dogs off at some point. I'm not even sure, you know, what, what he was telling and instructing his players, but they certainly didn't have to put forth much effort uh, uh, for, for very, very far stretches of the game. It's it's this this I'm just so glad that it's match day 38 and this yeah. this, this 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 season is coming to an end. But you know, honestly, I can tell you this: even when we finished seventh place, uh, what was it two years ago? Three two two three years ago, 2016 years, 17. Years. Yeah. I did not feel that way. I wasn't no. glad the season was over. I, despite the Europa League losses to you know Beersheba and Southampton or whatever. I don't know. I just this year felt like so much promise, and it's just been so disappointing, as you said, Nima, since Christmas. And 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 I mean, Mo, you need to pull some of that optimism out of your butt, man, because I am seriously <laughs> drowning over here. Oh dear, uh, Gabriele, wh- wh- how do you? How do, uh, what is your thoughts on the uh, on, on on all this? Interested to hear what you think. Yeah, uh, honestly, I I thought during the game that. We looked a bit like uh, Saris Napoli, but only in the sense that we completely lack of a plan B. So if we are pressured, if we are uh, play with teams that put uh, 10 men or 11 men behind the ball, we can't do anything except uh, playing the ball from the center, but from screen and to Asamoa, uh, from Asamoa to screen and um, uh, back and forth, back and forth. So I think it's uh, it was. A tactical issue and every every other alternative uh, you can tell it's improvised like yesterday, yesterday Spalletti also tried to go three at the back in the second half yeah. when he put in Icardi but uh, you could tell it was totally improvised because the the play was uh, always the same ball on the right side to Perisic and Perisic flicked the ball to no one basically in the mid <laughs> so no. You're absolutely right, and and that that is what that is also something I wanted to hear your thoughts about because after two seasons, I did not expect this Inter, like you said, to be improvised. That it, I mean, it's one thing if you're chase if it's a you know if it's a game where you have to score, you know you you know you improvise. It's one of those you know crazy games. It's you only need one goal. You improvise because you know the, the, it's a panic. It's panic mode. But the fact that you you, th- this Inter seems to lack an identity after two years with Spalletti. That's my that's my biggest concern. That although he's tweaked some things, he's got some players to raise their levels, like Brozovic, like D'Ambrosio, etc. This Inter, in my opinion, lacks an identity, and I didn't expect that after two years of the Spalletti. Do you agree? 
Yeah, I agree totally, especially uh, seeing how Spalletti talks in press conference. He has a really strong identity, but he has um, somehow failed to pass on this identity to the his identity to the team. So you can see on the pitch, they sometimes they don't know what to do. They are so so um, focused on doing one thing, the thing that they always did uh, since two years, that they can't do anything else. They uh, go into panic mode when they face opponents that uh, by now have read, uh, know uh, by heart how Spalletti how Spalletti teams play. So um, I'm, I honestly expected more from him uh, in these two years also. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think that uh, a change is needed also for this reason. Mm, agreed. Uh, Michael, uh, where, where are you on, 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 on the tactical issue versus the, the identity issue versus the, the mentality issue of these players yesterday against Napoli? So, like, like, you, like you guys were all saying, the mentality, the tactics, yeah. I, I didn't see motivation. And that's, the mo- that's the thing that I, that I was most upset about. Um, you know, a lot of you guys talked about the mid- midfield, you know, Gagliardini. I just didn't see motivation from both manager and team and manager reflecting on the team. I didn't see it. And with it's, it, it is mind boggling. And Christopher said a lot of good things. And I, I kind of want to echo a lot of the things because he brought up, he brought up something earlier where he said, uh, if you're a betting man, you want to make sure you don't put anything on Inter because you'd be losing your money. And I, I tend to agree with him. Although a lot of the markets are reflecting it not that way because Inter Milan is a 1.12 favorite to make top four which is those who understand betting that is a huge favorite to make top four i don't see that i, I think those odds are ridiculous but, well let's, uh, let's let's talk about it then because i mean i think that's a great segue into it because i mean you were playing in empoli who completely demolished uh, mazzari's torino 4-1 um and they are now they have pulled off the great ex- escape i mean they They've been in relegation. That's what I was going to mention. Actually, I'm going I want to. I want to mention that. I want to mention that down. next. Actually, yeah, I want to mention yeah. that next. So, so if you go back, obviously, remember two years ago, Empoli was in 17th for pretty much the entire season. They had like an eight or nine point gap on Crotone, and they managed to lose the remaining three games of the season. They had just to win their final game against Palermo, who was, I believe, already relegated, and yeah. Empoli had and uh, Crotone had to win their last game. And Empoli lost that game when they had they had everything locked up to be in Serie A for the following season. They blew it. Now I know this team is not the same team as they were two years ago. A lot of players have changed, and they're definitely a, a much better team. I I feel this year they just haven't gotten the results to, to reflect it. I don't know how, but they're a much better team this year than they were two years ago. But I just don't think these odds reflect on what we should expect. Uh, on this weekend because I, whew, I'm I'm more nervous than I've I've been in a long. I was more nervous than we were in the final game last season. That's for sure. Absolutely, absolutely. And, I'm with you on that. I'm with you on Empoli, that because Empoli's got a lot a lot to play for, and uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't doubt it. I would not be surprised if next week's game this week's game ends up in a draw or an Empoli win. That's just the way I feel. Yeah. No, I agree with you. I agree with you 100% on that. And I mean, I was going to get into that. I mean, this is an Empoli side that uh, they have to win. They know that they have to win at the San Siro uh, in order to 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 secure to secure Serie A. And it's also this, you know, this like you said, Michael. This isn't an Inter. Last season, Inter were in a in a in a positive, uplifting mind frame going into that last game because. Somehow, you know that the Inter had already lost the champion last Champions League spot, but still they were thanks to you know Walter Zenga's Crotone, they were they were given this last chance, this last ditch chance where they knew they had to win. So they came in there with with hope uh, into that game. This time around at the San Siro, packed San Siro, Inter have everything to lose. This has been an absolutely insane season. The negativity has been rife. 
And Empoli have, you know, they, they've been, you know, everybody's counted them out. They literally have everything to win in this game. And we all know at the San Siro, after 15, 20 minutes, if Milan score an early early goal away, uh, you know, they start, lead, you know, they lead early. Roma lead early. Um, Atalanta score an early goal, you know, whatever. Then then, then the San Siro is going to start booing and, and, and hissing at these players. And, and that is just going to make Empoli even happier. Uh, because that, that that's fuel that adds fuel to their flame, um, and and that is why I think that this game, you know, my my idea, the way I look at it is, I'm not a betting man, but if I would, I would I would bet on on a draw or or an Empoli win because to me, this this is I don't see how from a mental point of view how this Inter side is going to turn it around uh, because I don't think uh, they have Anima, can I, say I don't think they have anything yeah, yeah I just don't think they have anything left in the tank go go Kriti. Um just the, 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 just take this into consideration. Empoli had everything to play for last week and won 4-1. They have everything to play for this week. Inter had everything to play for last week. Napoli had nothing to play for last week and beat Inter 4-1. So what does that tell you? Mm, that's, that's Napoli a good point. had nothing to play for. They're second place no matter what. They have nothing to play for. They're, just, they're out there just collecting paychecks at this point, and they, they beat Inter like it was nothing. Yeah, they brushed into it off severely. Um, Mo, w- 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 I'm curious to hear your thoughts going into Empoli. Where do you stand on this? Like, are we talking? That you said there's nothing to be positive about. So, is this is this the new Mo? The the the, 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 the Mr. Positivity is gone, and it's Mr. Doom, or where are we? <laughs> no, look, I, uh, I honestly, I, I can, I can, all I can say is I don't know. I can see many different things happening. I can see. The the Eindhoven game, the PSV game, I repeat again, or the Eintracht Frankfurt game, or we can see a, a dominant Inter like a, against a, a, a bottom side that that is lock, locking the their uh, they're shoring up their defenses and playing extremely extremely uh, defensively. Uh, and inter maybe finding the fire and, 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 and battering them in. All I can say is the only saving grace about this particular match is that Empoli don't just need a point. They they probably need need the need the three points. So I think that I would have been much more pessimistic had I known that you know Empoli can are playing for a draw or or, or whatever. But seeing that they they're you know in realistically playing for the three points. Maybe that gives me a bit of comfort. So, that, um, insofar as that they won't be sitting so deep and, and and you know having eleven men behind the ball at all times and trying to lock Inter out. But I think the fundamental thing, and again speaking to what you said, is the, the fundamental and most worrying thing about this is is that it's a it's a match of mentality. It's a match of mindset, and uh, the, the, the the like the collective mindset of these players is so so fickle and, and, and weak you know i don't know if they can handle the pressure of, of of such an important match whatever whenever we had counted on on their mentality earlier in the season whether it's been the europa league game or or the champions league last match in the champions league group stage they've come they've come up short and that's you know I, in both those instances critty was uh pessimistic i was optimistic and i i turned out to be the one who was who was mistaken you know so all I can do is have faith in 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 last year's Lazio game and seeing you know maybe maybe they maybe they have what it takes in their in their heads to to get the job done, but you know looking at uh, how the arc has moved all through the season, it's difficult to imagine that these players can somehow magically transform themselves and and and, and play to you know we're we're not asking them to to perform a miracle. All we're asking to do, uh, like Michael said, is is just do what what everyone thinks is the most likely option, which is beat a rele- relegation battling side at home. You know, so yeah. it's not it's not like they they, do, they don't need to perform a miracle. They don't need to beat Lazio in in Rome on the last you know uh, with the last uh, in the last couple of minutes you know and score that goal to get you into the Champions League. You just need to win at home against a far inferior team. That's what you need to do. But we have so little faith in these players that it seems so <laughs> unlikely at the moment. 
Yeah. Gabriele, what's your thoughts going into the Empoli game? I mean, do you agree with 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 most of us here that there's a, literally it's if since it's a mentality issue, Inter, you know, this is this is not a um, uh, the, the, you know that 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 it seems that it's 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 advantage Empoli more than it's advantage Inter. Where are you on this issue? Yeah, of course. I think that uh, Empoli has the mental advantage here because they uh, know that uh, they have to win. So uh, it, this also applies to Inter. But um, we have seen how fragile. Inter mentality can be in uh, important games, and um, as we say in Italy, is um, non è sempre Pasqua. I mean that uh, good things can happen <laughs> <laughs> once, but uh, go non è sempre two, two seasons in a row, you have to you have to get uh, the the minimum yet important result at the the last match day. I think it can go. It can go well one time, but if if you put in that position yourself in that position again, you're asking for trouble. So I really hope that this doesn't uh, happen. Uh, I I honestly was uh, was more optimistic for the Napoli game mm. than for the Empoli game before. Me too. Now, Me too. Yeah. I was. Uh, I, I agree. I agree. I was so scared for the game against Kievo uh, because I know that um, against this uh, this type uh, of teams we struggle massively. So I really hope they can pull uh, pull off another uh, Lazio, but I honestly not very optimistic about about that. But- I think one positive thing about all of this is that you know, at, if if it was an Empoli that they, you know, if it was an Empoli that had already been relegated uh, and and had nothing to play for, or an Empoli that was already secure in the Serie A and had nothing to play for, I would be a little bit more worried because then they would just park the bus, and we know that Inter struggle against teams that that just close the game down. Empoli have to win. Uh, on Sunday, and I think that is something that speaks for Inter because that means that they have to attack, they have to they have to put pressure, uh, uh, and it turns and in in that in, in those situations, Inter usually uh, you know caveat usually against teams that don't have the high quality that Napoli, Juve, uh, Barcelona, Tottenham have, they 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 usually are able to play themselves out of that press uh, and, and are able to handle those games. Um, so I think that is one thing that makes me actually the this week's mo. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's that's what makes me Mr. Positivity this week is that Empoli have to score a goal. They have to win. You know, a draw is not good enough for them uh, because if, if you know if it's a draw, then you know they have to hope that uh, Genoa uh, don't beat Fiorentina. Um, so so I think you know it. I, I, I'm 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 somewhat positive going into this game because of that fact that Empoli must win uh, to be safe. And, and I think that, that that's that's a reason to be positive. But having said that, as, as Mo so, so brilliantly said, the PSV game, uh, yeah, th- th- that is what I'm worried about. A stupid mistake in the beginning of the game. Some, you know, Empoli score a goal and then, they, they, you know, they shut down the game. Uh, and, and, and Inter are frustrated. The San Siro starts booing, uh, you know. They throw it all away again in in the last last day kind of thing. Um, but if we if we are to predict, if we let's 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 try to go on a prediction here. Uh, starting with you, Michael. Where where what do you think? Uh, How is this game going to end, and who's going to score? Well, uh, like I don't want to be the Debbie Downer, and <laughs> I'm usually I'm I'm usually pretty optimistic uh, in circumstances. I just uh, I feel like. Uh, the game is going to be a draw, and both teams are going to suffer. Like Inter would finish fifth, fifth, and Empoli is going to get relegated. That's just a, that's just what my brain is telling me. Um, look, like Inter know they need to win. This is, I mean, but they knew they need to win it against PSV too at home. So it, it just feels like the same type of situation. They failed at at that game, and I can honestly believe that that game against PSV should have been a lot easier than the one they're going to have this weekend. And they and they blew that one. 
So uh, I just I, I feel like both teams are going to go for it, and then both teams are going to be in it, and both teams are going to end up suffering at the end. That's just my my thought, and uh, I hope that's not the case. <laughs> that's that's exactly what I think. I, I'm I think a one all draw is where I'm, I'm with you on that. I'm I'm in a one. I've got, I've got one one in my head. Um, uh, Mo, where are you on this? What's your prediction? I think it's uh, it's it's either a, a really disappointing, uh, impotent draw like you guys uh, just uh, predicted, or alternatively, uh, it could be a complete thrashing by Inter. You know, the, it can be. Mm. I, don't, I, I I find it difficult to to, to see a, a scenario where Empoli win. You know, and may God not let me eat my words, but. Uh, <laughs> But, yeah. you know, I, I think it's either a really, like, sterile, annoying, frustrating, awful, like, waste of 90 minutes of our, you know, collective lives uh, <laughs> in, a, in, in, a, in a draw. Or it could be, like, because another thing, you know, we've spoken about the fact that Empoli need to win. We also we also have to remember two things. First, about that PSV game. Um, it, wasn't, it wasn't a life or death situation for the players. They had already achieved the thing. They, they'd... They'd beaten Tottenham. They'd uh, play, you know. They'd everyone kind of discounted Inter getting out of the group anyway. So it wasn't like they didn't really have their backs against the wall. It was a good cherry on top of like what they'd accomplished so far. Had Inter managed to get out of the group, but you know you could tell that the players didn't really believe that they would be able to do it. So I think that's always in the back of their minds. But this is, you know. This same group of players have tasted Champions League football, many of them for the first time in their careers, especially for, for, for the first time in an Inter jersey, for sure. So I think maybe this could be what ignites the hunger in them. Because again, this, this match, you know, on paper, tactically, technically, quality-wise, there's, there's, there's no contest. Inter should really, yeah. you know, it's, it should be a walk in the park for Inter. It's only about mentality. So I think the only way that these players you know, get the job done is if they remember what Champions League football tastes like, what what the anthem sounded like at the San Siro in the Inter jersey, and they really, you know, put whatever, whatever's, you know, whatever conflicts, demons, whatever, whatever is going on in their minds aside, set it aside and go get the job done. That's uh, one, one or two ways, either a, a strong, convincing Inter win and everything's forgotten, hooray, or uh, the most awful of, of the draws, and like you guys say, that suit neither neither team neither team walks away happy from the match. Critty, mm-hmm. what do you think? Prediction. A quarter, I mean... billion, a quarter of a billion people today are crying over the end of Game of Thrones, and next Monday, however <laughs> many millions of Inter fans there are in the world, they're going to be crying over the end of the Serie A campaign. <laughs> Um, well, well done. <laughs> uh, so oh, here's the thing. You're right about one thing. Empoli have to win because Fiorentina have lost five on the bounce, and that's Genoa's opponent. So Genoa's probably going to have a, a, a puncher's chance, despite the fact that they've only they've drawn and lost um, in their last five matches as well. Genoa does have a puncher's chance of of, of defeating Fiorentina. So Empoli has to go in with a, as you said earlier, Nima, a winner's mentality. God forbid Inter knows what the hell that is. <laughs> and they have to go to the San Siro and take care of business. So they're going to be looking to get the uh, the three points. Uh, three points assures them of Serie A football next season. Uh, as you said, the worst possible scenario that could happen is Empoli go up in the first quarter, uh, quarter yeah. of an hour. So first 15 minutes, if Empoli gets ahead, it, it almost at that point, it doesn't matter what the scoreboards read for Roma or Milan. Inter is going to get in their own way, in their own head. And as you said, uh, Empoli will shut the game down. And probably Inter is going to open up uh, and have to, to get very, very aggressive. Uh, probably themselves uh, open for a counterattack on, on the opposite end. So with that said, um, I do believe that Empoli will win 2-1. to one. I think uh, Di Lorenzo and Caputo put Inter out of their misery and send them into the Europa League. I think Mauro Riccardi, yes, indeed, our great hero, our Argentinian <laughs> tiger, Mr. Ink Tattoo himself, I love him. Uh, he will get his goal, which all that matters to him, because it's going you know, to get Wanda talking on Instagram again. And um, <laughs> it'll be a meaningless goal. And uh, Empoli will win 2-1, to one, and Inter will... Have to hope that uh, Milan lose to Spal and Roma 
I don't even remember who they play at the moment, but uh, they don't do the business as well. So it's not going to be in our own hands, unfortunately. We're going to have to have some help along the way to get to Champions League football. Uh, Gabriele, what are your predictions? Are you, I mean, I know you're Italian, so you know, do you, do you suffer from scaramanzia, or, or are you are you comfortable with uh, with uh, doing the prediction? <laughs> yeah, I suffer from I suffer from scaramanzia too, but uh, <laughs> I tend to be realistic uh, with the Inter. So uh, that's, I think that's a same... good that's a good approach. That's a very healthy approach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that uh, this game has a draw written all over it because. I can definitely definitely see a scenario where Empoli would uh, only need one point to to stay up. So if Inter start uh, the game with the same mentality they uh, they have started the Napoli game, uh, it will be more and more difficult. So it could be Inter PSV episode two, unfortunately. <laughs> I see. Uh, I also had pictured in my mind uh, one. One, yeah. So, I think that that's how it's gonna end. I hope not, but uh, I think that that's how yeah. it's gonna end. Yeah, it's it's pretty much. I think it sounds we're pretty much in agreement agreement here. I I remember I was talking to Will Beckman, uh, who 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 uh, yesterday we were talking on Facebook, and he said that um, <laughs> he said that he remembers at the beginning of the season how Fulvio and him on this show were saying that you know finally this is the season where Inter stopped being Inter, and instead this season ended being the most Inter season of all time, where Inter out Intered themselves pretty much. Um, so yeah, no, I think I think that it's got written. That's got written. That I think I agree with every single thing all of you said. It, it's got it's got one one. It's got draw written all over it, and it's got uh, Armageddon written all over it. Because I think that Milan will Nima, beat Spal away. Do, Nima, yeah? do you remember? Do you remember before Christmas how all of us on this podcast were praising Icardi for his unbelievable Champions League performances? Now he was just a gamer. He was playing his greatest football on the grandest stage of them all. Everything before December 25th was, in fact, not so bad. And look yeah, at what good. we've had since 2019 started. It's been a six months of complete chaos. And I'd like to plug our end of season review next week uh, uh, on Studio Inter. Where we'll be going through all of this and trying somewhat to make sense of the insanity that these past six months have been. Because we can, if, if there ever was... You know, the cliche that a football season is made up of two seasons, one winter and one spring, it's been true of this one. Because before Christmas, it was a completely different uh, ball game, all entirely. Right, um, let's uh, move on uh, to the part of the show where we walk down a memory lane and pay tribute to someone, uh, a player or a coach worthy of being called Inter Legends. And it's presented by Mr. Critty Smith. Non è un personaggio... Che, che, che può essere sostituito perché era un personaggio assolutamente unico il fatto che abbia sempre eh, pensato e avuto nel cuore due colori il nero e l'azzurro uh, thank you Nima uh, before uh, we get started I would like to read a quote but before I say that please call that podcast next week a fish called Wanda please call it, title it <laughs> fish called Wanda. Um, if I can read you all a quote real quick on the gentleman that I'm about to discuss uh, it's, it's, it's not that long but uh, just hold bear with me Because this, this kind of plays into this, this man's career at Inter. Uh, he got a phone call from, his Brazil, from, from Brazil. Adri, dad is dead. I saw him in his room. He threw the phone and started screaming. You couldn't imagine that kind of scream. Since the day Moratti and myself watched over him, he was our little brother. He kept playing football, scoring goals, and pointing to the sky, dedicating to them to his father. After the phone call, nothing was the same. Ivan Cordoba spent one night with him and said, Adri, you're a mix of Ronaldo and Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Are you aware that you could become the best player ever? We did not succeed of pulling him out of his depression. That is a quote by Javier Zanetti, uh, Inter Milan teammate and club captain of the impact of Adriano and the death of his father in 2004. So today's Inter legend or not Inter legend, because this is a true debate. I don't know if this is this is probably the, the most gray area that we've discussed on this on this podcast as far as Inter legends. Everyone we've talked about so far has been pretty much a shoe in, but. As it pertains to Adriano, this guy obviously had all the talent in the world. He had over 100 appearances for the club. Uh, didn't quite get to 50 goals, uh, but you know, in the early in the early stages of his career, he was going to take over for Brazil, right where uh, the original Ronaldo left off. I mean, he was a prolific striker. He had all the gifts and all the tools that one could ever imagine to hope to have in this game of football. 
and uh, a, prolific, a more prolific number nine there's really been. Uh, but after his father passed away, after the emotional stress of that, after the damage it did to his head and the weight that he put on as, as a result of it, his career was really never the same. So, you know, obviously he was a part of some of these Guzzetti winning teams uh, in the middle part of the last decade. Uh, however, he was not a part of the Mourinho uh, campaigns in 2008, 9, and 10. Uh, so, you know, Nima, I want to start with you. Uh, Adriano, I have fond memories of him. I, I, he, he's one of those guys. I mean, I was in my late teens, early 20s when he was at Inter and, and making an impact. And uh, I thought very, very highly of him. He's He's one of my favorite players from the past decade. Uh, I, it's one, it, honestly, his story is kind of heartbreaking to me. Uh, and still to this day, I, I wonder what could have been with him. I, I feel like there's so much un, un, untapped potential. And just I think he just, he, he just lost his way there. Um, so what are your thoughts on uh, Adriano? For me, I'll go ahead and say I, I do not I, – I cannot put him – if he's an interlegend, uh, it, it's, it's got to be an outside – it's got to be an outside – sort of, um, you know, based on what, 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 what he could have been. I'm looking more as to uh, not, not what he actually did. The talent was certainly there, but I just don't know that he ever fulfilled it. So what are your thoughts? I agree 100% with that. Uh, that's exactly my thoughts. I think if this was called intermyths or, you know, mythical players that have played for Inter, he'd be a shoe in uh, But he's not an Inter-legend, although as tragic as the reason for him not being one may be, for me, he's, he, 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 he's one of those players that never fulfilled his destiny uh, as a player and at Inter. Uh, and, and the reason for that is obviously being, you know, the tragedy following his father's death and the alcoholism and weight issues that followed that. Um, and, and, and that's really, really tragic. Uh, but, but as a character, as a person, you know, my, my favorite memory of, of him is the, is the 2004-2005 derby that Inter won 3-2 when he... When he heads the winning goal in the corner, you know, beating Christian Vieri, who had left Inter, uh, you know, who was given a free, who was given a free transfer by Massimo Moratti, you know, where he had promised uh, that he wouldn't, you know, that he was going to go to Monaco, and then he ends up signing on a free transfer for Milan, um, and 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 you know all the stuff that he had said about Inter and Moratti and everything else, uh, and for him to, you know, and that derby, the way the way that Inter, you know, that, that the derby where Inter hadn't be was struggling so much against Ancelotti's Christmas tree formation, hadn't won a derby for ages, and the way in which they won that derby, I mean that 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 game to me kind of set the you know, that, that that game, I remember it so well because after that I felt that this is an Inter that can actually start fighting for titles again. This is an Inter that can start winning Scudetti. This is a, that can start fighting for titles. Uh, and it was Mancini's first year. Um, and, 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 and also, you know, for me, that, 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 is, that, that is pretty much, that, that, that game epitomized, you know, that is that, that for me is his greatest performance in an Inter shirt. And it is a legendary performance, but I don't think that it warrants him to be an inter legend if that makes sense um uh, mancini really fought for him too because there was a lot of backlash from from you know the supporters of the club that you know he was he, he just wasn't panning out and and you know mancini was actually one of his one of his big, most vocal supporters uh, going remember i remember that from back in the day as you know as far as trying to get him to to, to get back in form and, and of course you had a captain like zanetti that was there that was was doing everything he could to 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 mentor this young kid and, and, and get him back on his way um it's it's amazing with that kind of dressing room you know i i, w I can only imagine what adriano would be going through with this current dressing room but back then you know there was uh, there was a lot more stability so you know it's just it, it's a real shame you know mo uh, you're kind of in mine and nima's age group here as far as inter how long you've been an inter fan and and you know what generations we are so what what are your thoughts on adriano because you you would have seen it through the sort of the same eyes as us yeah i uh i think uh, i agree with nima wholeheartedly i think uh like uh every i think every uh inter supporter who's of our age and and, and lived through that uh, particular era you know, uh, in the form formative footballing years, will have a very soft spot for Adriano. But to call him a legend is also a bit of a stretch. Um, he had, like Nima said, legendary performances in an Inter jersey. He had all the skills and uh, talent and, and the natural ability to become uh, the world's best number nine. But, you know, sadly, he wasn't able to, for whatever demons he was battling, he wasn't able to fulfill that potential. 
I will always like I, I I'm never gonna speak ill of Adriano. Uh, I think uh, he'll always have a very very special place in my heart. If 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 only for performances like the the Derby one that uh, Nima Nima spoke about. Uh, but yeah, I mean you know he just uh, he came up short when it when it just came to solidifying his legendary status at the club. You know um, we, we yeah, but absolutely no ill will there. You know. I'm uh, nothing but love, all all love to Adriano. You know, it was also funny. Uh, he he didn't just struggle with with Inter, but also his international team performance to struggle when Dunga, you know, a couple of times failed to call him up for a friendly or two. You know, it was also due to his uh, lack of enthusiasm or, or lack of work ethic or whatnot on the pitch. So, uh, you know, it was it, it honestly it didn't just the, the death of his father and whatever mental, uh, you know. Uh, you know, mental stress and, and, and fracture it caused him. It didn't just affect his his career to enter and, and, and subsequent clubs he played for, but it also affected his international career as well. And we know, you know, what Brazilian football means to that nation. So, um, but Michael, I'm going to switch it to you. Do you have anything to add uh, as far as Adriano's career at Inter? Yeah, quickly, uh, um, I'll just add one. I mean, I've always defined the word legend being consistently at a high level for a long period of time. And whether that could be, you know, seven to 10 years, that's where I kind of draw the line. And Adriano just wasn't that player for that long. Um, you know, he was actually the first jersey that I ever purchased of an Inter player because I was so excited about him. But uh, those couple of years, it just didn't last, just didn't last long enough for me. And, uh, but I still, like, I still cherish those memories that, that he gave me as a, you know, I'm 32 years old right now, so that was in the prime of my me becoming an Inter fan. So he was the first type of memories that I had. Um, but I do think that had he been a little more consistent for a few more years and he didn't have, the uh, obviously, the off-the-field issues, then I would definitely put him in that conversation. But it just wasn't... Uh, wasn't that player for long enough. Um, I still I still think about him all the time because uh, I've got a few Milan friends who always, you know, give me the gears about uh, that one game that Inter played Milan in the derby and the ball came off his, his arm. And and uh, yeah. they always they always joke at me and say, they always call him Adriamano, Adriamano, Adriamano. <laughs> and, uh, and I always just brush it off aside and say, hey, it's... That's what it was. Thankfully, there was no VAR back in the day, but uh, <laughs> we, that's one of the, my favorite memories is, uh, is him in the Derby, of course. And look, I love the guy, just not on that legendary status as, uh, as this is uh, talked about. Absolutely. So, Gabriel, we'll finish with you. What are your, what are your thoughts and uh, opinions on uh, the inter-career of Adriano? Yeah, as I said, uh, uh, I don't think he can be considered uh, an inter-legend. Uh, but uh, I still think that he mm, that was such a shame that he didn't fulfill his potential because on his day he was uh, really dominant. I think it's the most dominant player I've seen uh, in an Inter shirt, maybe together with Ibrahimovic uh, in my lifetime. So uh, I think that uh, uh, yeah, it's it's too bad that he didn't uh, perform so consistently during uh, his period at Inter. I, I remember two goals especially from him. The first goal, the debut goal, also, um, even though it was uh, in a friendly, it was a uh, uh, free kick against uh, Real Madrid. That was how he introduced himself to Inter, even though he was then uh, sold uh, with the to Parma and then Fiorentina, and uh, also the coast-to-coast um, -coast goal against Udinese. Everyone in Italy said that uh, he couldn't play because he was jet lag. He, uh, he had just returned returned from uh, Brazil, and then he went on the pitch and scored a, a brace, and that uh, one of the best goals I've seen uh, against Udinese. Yeah, very well. So, Nima, I think we've decided unanimously that he played a big part at the club, but he is not officially an interlegend, unfortunately. 
No, a uh, great segment there, uh, Kriti. Uh, thanks for that. Uh, now we move. Uh, now it's time for the part of the show where we pay tribute, rip the piss out of, um, and uh, make fun of someone or something uh, in the world of football. Starting with the negativity this week's uh, moji, which will be presented by Mr. Michael Gallo. Uh, my moji of the week will be, uh, of course, a player we've already mentioned twice in this podcast now will be Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Well, where is he these days? He is playing in Major League Soccer for LA Galaxy. Um, as cocky and as arrogant as he has ever been, um, <laughs> this this past week he went a little bit too far. Um, he, they were LA Galaxy was playing New York City FC. And uh, he grabbed the neck of goalkeeper Sean Johnson. Now, MLS does have VAR, and he grabbed his neck, and he basically squeezed it. So it's almost like he was choking him. <laughs> and uh, Sean Johnson, the goalkeeper, he went down. I don't know how VAR missed it. They, he only got a yellow card for it. Uh, but um, I remember... A couple days later, they just... Yeah, they they met they met they suspended him for two matches and I just don't understand uh, in a league that has video and VAR why he would do this and uh, it's just the Ibra that we have all you know we've all seen this before he's done similar incidents on the field whether it would be with Inter or other teams uh, it was just uh, unnecessary and it's almost like he feels like he is above the league because it's not you know, on the same level as, say, playing in Europe. Um, so he thought he can get away with it because the league knows they need Ibra on the field. However, he tested them too much, and he got what he deserved, and it was a two-match ban, and uh, you know, maybe he'll think twice about doing it next time. Uh, we all know he won't because, as he said, as you know, I, I don't know if you saw that interview where he said, I am MLS. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's 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 who he is, and hopefully, hopefully he learns, but... It's just that's uh, the arrogance and cockiness of the. I, I saw that it was like, I think it was two weeks ago where it was after a game said, uh, maybe I get in trouble if I say this to, say this, uh, maybe I get in trouble by MLS, but it's okay because I am MLS. <laughs> I love it. Fucking love it. Right. Uh, let's uh, move on to uh, something slightly more comical. This week's uh, Frog, which will be presented by our guest, Mr. Gabriele Romano. Yeah, so this week there were uh, there were two, a couple of strong candidates for frog frog of the week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one being uh, one uh, uh, both along uh, the same line. Uh, one being uh, Vandanara calling uh, useless. Uh, uh, specific yeah. part, uh, anatomical part of uh, <laughs> Lady Adani's sister uh, after a Cardiff goal. <laughs> but uh, yeah, along those lines, there, w- there was uh, uh, something that, hap- uh, that happened in Paris. Uh, a few years ago, Busquets made a very bold comparison. Uh, he said in an interview that football is better than sex. And uh, after him, <laughs> some other players went uh, along uh, the same lines, like Pirlo or uh, also Paulins, uh, who claimed that he liked tackling better than sex. Uh, however, this school, this school of thought uh, doesn't <laughs> seem to have gained much traction in Paris, as uh, during the game between uh, PSG and Dijon, um, on the screens of the stadium lounge, uh, someone decided they <laughs> wanted to see something else, and that something else was a very, very explicit uh, adult movie. Let's call it like that. And so, yeah, maybe it was uh, an attempt to show that uh, Ligan is uh, harder than it that it looks. Oh my God! I, I when I saw that tweet from this lady who was in the VIP lounge after the game, and in every single screen. 
like around the entire VIP area from small to giant 60 inch screens. Somebody had changed the channel to the adult channel and there was this woman performing oral sex on this man and everyone was <laughs> confused. It was very, very funny. Um, yeah, I, I, for me, that is the frog of the season. I, I, can't, I can't imagine. It was, it was incredibly, incredibly, incredibly funny. Um, right, thanks for that, thanks for that, Gabriele. Uh, now it's time for um, the something much more positive. This week's uh, Moratti, which I'll be presenting because Mo is boycotting it due to uh, Inter's performance in in Naples. He's, he works a lot. He's intelligent, and he surprises uh, people sometimes with his uh, ideas. Not easy to find one person of this uh, quality. Right. Um, you know, everybody knows that football nowadays is, you know, it's, it's all about, uh, you know, it's, it's all about money and it's all about, uh, you know, the one with the biggest wallet wins, uh, you know, Ma Manchester City being the, the greatest, the greatest uh, example of that. But so every now and then you see something that, you know, absolutely that, 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 that kind of challenges that and, and reminds us that football is, 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 some, is somehow also the great equalizer. And uh, I, I saw this uh, today and, and in the Welsh Premier League, um, there is a team called Cardiff Met FC. It's, it's, it's basically a, uh, it's a, it's, it's a team that is made up of university students, postgraduate and undergrad students, um, who all play for free. They don't get paid anything. Uh, all they get is basically, they don't have to pay to, 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 for the gas when they travel around Wales. Uh, and as someone who's lived in Wales, believe me, it's a lot of, it's a lot of driving, uh, because they, the, they, especially North Wales, where they were in Bala, uh, they, they, they they haven't um, let's just say that they haven't exactly paved a lot of uh, motorways up there, so they don't get paid anything. Everyone is an undergrad or a postgrad, and they qualified this week on penalties, beating Bala uh, Bala Town. Um, uh, they 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 beat them uh, on penalties, and they have now qualified for the Europa League. So. Even if Inter make it to the Europa League next season, I know who I'm supporting in the Europa League next season, and it's Cardiff Met FC. Congratulations, boys. You deserve it. Uh, you're the Moratti of the week. Right. Uh, I'd, uh, that was all we had time for this week. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Critty uh, for, for giving us uh, the Inter Legends, and I'd also like to thank uh, Michael. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me, Nima. I appreciate it. And uh, I love that Inter Legends segment. That was, uh, that was fantastic. I'm glad you liked it. Uh, and I'd also like to thank Mo, who, who, despite his boycott, I hope you enjoyed yourself. <laughs> no, I, I, it, was a good, uh, it was a good call on the Moratti. It's just uh, I was in uh, no state to uh, provide any positivity. <laughs> but let's they, see. They broke There's always Mo. next week. They, there's always next week. They broke Mo. That's going to be like, you know, that, 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 <laughs> that, it takes a lot to break Mo. And also, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Gabriele Romano, for coming on. Uh, I hope you enjoyed yourself. I would like to, I hope you come on some other time soon. Thank you, Nima. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. I uh, lots of fun, and I hope to come on soon again. Thank you. You're welcome. We'll definitely have you on. And until next week, I'm your host, Nima Tavalli Ruzzeri, wishing you a good week, three points, and sempre e solo Forza Inter. Forza!